Psalms, chapter 71, a good age psalm. Talks about ages of a human being. Psalm 71. In thee, O Lord, in Christ, our standing. Our standing is in Christ. Problem is we have a state. An easy way I found out about our standing is sure in God. I'm a child of God. I'm saved. I'm not going to lose it. Now the standing, that's a different story. One minute I'm happy. One minute I'm sad. One minute I'm, I'm holy. One minute I'm sinning. One minute I'm patient. One minute I'm impatient. And the simplest way I found to understand that is we have 50 states in the union. Think of state as, you know, 50 different things that I could be doing. But my stand in Christ, in thee, O oh Lord, I do put my trust. And there are people who put their trust in their finances. There are people who put their trust in a job, which brings about finances. There are people who put their trust in doodads. There are people who put their trust in other people. There's all kinds of things you can put your trust in. You can put your trust in weapons. You can put your trust in the military. You can put your trust in another man. But he says, in the Lord, where I stand. And if you are a child of God and you are saved, born again, going to heaven, you can be in another state of trust. Your state of trust could be something that's not the Lord. Let me never be put to confusion. The Bible says when it comes to tongues, to the Corinthian church, God is not the author of confusion. And we have times right now, you know, we, we, we go through life and like, we pray for things and we don't know. And it's those times, Lord God, I'm praying, say, Lord, is this you or is this the devil or is this me? And I can think about one thing right now in my life, my prayer life, and Lord, is it me? There's one thing right now, Lord, if it was a different circumstance, I go do it, but Lord, is it the flesh? And we need an answer from God. We need to trust God so we don't put in confusion with the contents of the verse. Because if we are in a confused state, we may not be trusting in God. And when we don't trust in God, we trust in the devil, we trust in ourselves, we're going to fall into trouble. So in the standing of the Lord of trust, Lord, I trust you. I don't want to move my trust anywhere else but you. Deliver me in thy righteousness. What's right? What's holy? I don't want to be unholy. I don't want the devil to give me a victory so I can rely on him. I don't want to be in my satisfaction or a man's satisfaction, but I want to be delivered by you, God, whoever you use. Whatever you use, let it be in righteousness. Like I said, many people already know I'm seeking a wife and I'm asking God, I want one of your daughters. The daughter of the Lord means she's saved. She loves the Lord. There can be deliver, deliverance and it may not be right. You say, what do you mean? Okay, I'm in financial trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to pray to the Lord. I'm going to go run to a financial institute and I'm going to get a loan. Now, loan's bad, no, but did we seek God? Or did we run out on God? There's a woman the Bible records. She spent all her money on the doctors. Doctors wrong? No, Jesus said, they that are they that are whole need not a physician, but those are that are sick. 
There's a man in the Bible who's diseased in his feet and he sought the doctors more than he sought God. And caused me to escape out of my trouble, out of the problems. Incline thy ear unto me, listen to me, God, hear me, God, and save me. So the writer of the psalm is, is got some kind of trouble. And he needs trust and he does not want any confusion of the trust of the situation and to be delivered by God's righteousness to get out of that escape. Well, listen to me, God, and save me out of this problem. I mean, he almost, he, uh, if you want to call that an outline for prayer and trouble, there it is. Be thou my strong habitation where I dwell. We ought to be dwelling in God and living in God by His way. Too many Christians are living under the realm of America. And America is their home, and America is their pride, and America is their hope and joy. America is not the habitation of God, I'm sorry. Not when America has told God, the Bible, and Jesus Christ to get out. We don't want your Ten Commandments. We don't want your prayer. We don't want your Jesus. And if we had an opportunity, we could, if we can scramble the, the Constitution, we'd lock you up and jail you and maybe even persecute you. And it's not just America. It's England. It's China. And many of the nations of the world. God is not dwelling there. God is dwelling amongst Christians, not an unholy nation. Whereunto I may continually resort unto God. This world is not our home, Christian. Our home city is not Washington, D.C. It's not uh, Budapest. It's not Moscow. It's New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem. And we gotta keep going back to New Jerusalem. He said, "Well, why, wait, we don't go to New. Yes, I I go to New Jerusalem many times. That's where I'm going. That's my home. That's my home. And when this world has bogged me down in troubles and problems as, as they're coming now upon me, I have a better place. I have a place that this is not my home. I have a home of no more pain, no more sorrow, brand new body, no more sins, no more problems." I may have said that twice, but I'm going to a place where there's no more problems. You stay here, and you have the problems. Paul said, listen, I'd rather be absent from this body, but it's needful for me to be here for you. But when God's done with me, I have finished my course, I have fought the fight, and I'm going home. Listen, this world is terrible without Jesus Christ. This world is horrible with Jesus. They are against my Savior. They are against the ways of the Bible. This place does not make me feel comfortable, even though I'm serving the Lord and the Lord's giving me peace. I don't want it here. I don't like it here. And I wake up another day assuming that God has got something for me to do for his will. He's not finished with me. And when he's finished with me, I'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. It's that simple. Too many of you got your habitation, you got your resort in the world. And you're going to answer for it, wood, hay, and stubble at the judgment seat of Christ. And I don't care what you say, I don't care where you stand up. Your savior, your place is not Donald Trump, it's not Obama, it's not the Democrats, it's not America, it's not the White House, it's not England, it's New Jerusalem by the grace, by the love of God, which is his son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He didn't give us presidents and kings and queens. He gave us Jesus Christ. And you hate this kind of preaching because you're American. I'd rather go somewhere where people love the Bible and want to get saved and want to serve the Lord and want to do life and love the book. I don't like being somewhere where they reject God all the time. Terrible. 
Thou hast given commandment to save me. Thou art my rock. What did Paul say? That's Jesus Christ. And my fortress. A fortress is a mighty strong building that protects you. What greater building that can protect you is heaven itself. And then when we get to New Jerusalem. New, Jer <coughs> Excuse me, New Jerusalem has walls. Yet the gates are never shut. And there will be no enemy, no sin, no troubles, no problems coming through the gates of New Jerusalem. You want to live in America? You want to serve America? Every year, I guarantee, until the Lord calls us home, every year you're going to get more problems, more troubles, more, more enemies against God, against the Bible, against you. You go, ahead, you go ahead and stand up for America. It's only going to get worse. You're not going to give a revival in America. You ain't going to get one in England. Because the churches won't get right. Well-known churches I checked today that Bible-believing, we got our church doors closed. So your God's not mighty enough. You say, Stiley, are you worried? The only thing I'm worried about is getting sick. I don't want to be sick. Other than that, God will take care of me. And if God wants someone to die by coronavirus, you, you can have all the gloves. You can have all the, the antiseptic spray. You can have all the hand stuff. You can have all the soap. You can have all the toilet paper. You can lock yourself in a bunker. And if God wants you dead by a disease, he will get that disease to you. And you will die. And God wants to show you mercy. And he wants you to live as Ahab did. And he said, Ahab, you're, you're going to die. And he got right. And he walked softly. And he went and mourned to God. And, and God told Elijah, turn around and go tell him. I'm going to give him a little bit longer. I will, I will hold off the wrath. You're putting your stock in America. I put my stock in God, Jesus Christ. Listen, this America, this country was a, 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 a godly nation. It was a biblical nation. But the people who did that, the pilgrims, turned into the Congregationalists. And the Congregationalists persecuted the separatists, which the separatists were Bible believers, or saved. That's all gone. And that land that they built in Massachusetts, the, the new Israel and all that, they, they started stealing from, the, from the, the blessings of Israel. That's a sin. You need to get your heart on God. Call me whatever you want to call me, but I'll tell you what. I, I, pray, for, I pray for the president. I pray for his family. I don't know what you call ex-president, but the ones that are living in their family. I pray for Hillary Clinton. I want to see her and her family get saved and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to see uh, Jimmy Cotter get out of his work salvation, get out of the Southern Baptist and get to Jesus Christ. I want to see Obama get saved. I want to see him believe in the Lord Jesus. I want to see his wife and his daughters turn to Jesus Christ. I want to see Paul Lizzy get saved. And I just lost a whole bunch of people at that point. Because some of you think that she's so much the devil, so much that she can't get saved. That's what's wrong with you. And that's exactly why you're not going to get a revival in America. And the Bible says that the man, who, 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 per, Nero, who persecuted the Christians, and the two men that told us to obey the government under Nero were Paul and Peter. Your standing is not in where it should be standing. You actually stepped out of Christ. Your state is wrong. The rock in the fortress is Almighty God, Jesus Christ. Remember that. Deliver me. There he goes again, saying it twice. Verily, verily. It's important. I got to get out of this. You know what deliver is for America today? Pizza. Uh, these new places now where you can have the, fast, the famous fast food restaurant. You can have them deliver your food to your house at an extraordinary price. You can have now your hamburgers and your and your chicken and all that delivered to you. That's what deliver means in America today. The Bible deliver is I'm in trouble. God get me out of it. Deliver me. Oh my God. You know what they say today? OMG. 
Now MT. They use so many abbreviations today. I look at something, I got going. go, well, what's these abbreviations? I had one day, the other day, the abbreviation was for some woman in the government. I'm like, wow, they even abbreviate her name. Oh my God means I am in trouble. OMG. You're a fool. You know what you're just saying? A statement in the Bible that means serious. OMG. It's OMG. <laughs> OMG. You'll find yourself in sin using OMG. It's a serious expression. And if it's not a serious expression, it is the wonderful power of God. And how many people say OMG and don't even believe in God? Don't even know who God is. Out of the hand of wicked. Now that wicked, I told you, when you look at that, the wicked, man, that's a reference to the Antichrist. This psalmist says there's one wicked, the wicked. But there's somebody that is wicked in this man's life. And Lord, you got to get that guy. I got to get away from that guy. I got to get out of that guy. I got to be delivered. I got to be moved out of that guy's presence or that guy has to be moved. And the perfect example, this is not David's song, but the perfect example would be when God killed King Saul. In battle, God delivered David from Saul. Saul would not come back ever again to, to give David a hard time or search his life. Now, David had other problems after that. But in the tribulation period, those Jews, oh my God, he's killing us. We're losing our heads. Oh my God, he just killed Moses and Elijah. And they're rejoicing. And the world's having Christmas. If you don't know what I mean, you haven't studied your Bible. And then, oh my God, their body's raising up. They were caught up to heaven. Now, that's not, we're in trouble, but oh my God, see the power that God has? The resurrection is real. And when they see Christ coming on horseback, he has to be coming back because we just witnessed two God's prophets died and they came alive. We also saw the beast get killed, the Antichrist himself get killed, and he came alive. The resurrection is going to be real that Jesus arose because they seen the Antichrist and they seen Moses and Elijah. Jews require a sign. Oh my God, I got such, I, I'm in such trouble, God. Whatever, how the trouble comes. And oh my God, you're so great. Now you can go at one point, oh my God, the trouble. Then you go, oh my God, how'd you get me out of that? I do that a lot of times when I do my checkbook, like, oh boy. I'll be praying, hey Lord God, please bless, you know, this is April, please Lord, bless April. Before I, well, I'll be praying for May. Lord God, please bless May. Help me with May. May comes along, I'm doing it. Hey, oh, 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 Lord, help, please. And then I get done, I'm like, oh my God. How'd you do that? How did you do that? Out of the hand of the unrighteous. That could be anybody. Anybody who's not known by God. Christian, you better not have any worldly friends that you admire and love more than Christians. Because the Bible says that Jesus said, Marvel not the world, hate them. Know that it hated me first. If the world loves you, Christian, you got a big problem. You need to get down on your knees. You need to get repent because you're not living right. Then he says, a cruel man. Well, there's World War II right there. The wicked out of Hitler. He was not saved, though. He was a Catholic, unrighteous, and he was cruel. The Antichrist, he's going to be the wicked one. He's unrighteous. He's not ever going to be saved. And the cruel things he's going to do. He's going to, God's going to allow him to deceive majority of the people in the tribulation period. God says, in, in, I forget what that's only in first or second. He says he's going to strong, send a strong delusion and they're going to believe that lie. Because they want to. Do you see how much we learned in the tribulation period? We're in 71 Psalms. 
And there are people out there, well, I don't read the Old Testament. You're missing a lot. Some people out there, well, you're stretching it. I don't believe I'm stretching it. Verse 5, for thou art my hope. Oh, 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 Lord God. What's Timoth What's Titus 2.13 say? Who is the blessed hope? Jesus Christ. Who is the Lord? Oh, Lord God. Jesus Christ. What's Titus 2.13 say? God and Jesus Christ. Jehovah Witnesses are wrong. The Bible clearly states that Jesus is God. My hope, my hope, my hope, my life verse is the blessed hope. That's Jesus Christ. He's coming. Oh, Lord God. Thou art my trust from my youth. Now the, the psalmist is going to get, he's going to tell you about how he started serving the Lord young. And we're going to see a type of Jeremiah here. He said, I've been, I've been following you, Lord, since I've been young, since you. you. That's, that's like into Timothy. Timothy followed the Lord. Man, he had a great mother and great mother, grandmother, Paul said. The, psych, the fact is that Timothy's father was a Greek and unsaved. Oh, I can't raise my family right. My husband's unsaved. Lois and Eunice did. And their product was Timothy. What's your excuse? This man was brought up youth. We don't know anything about his parents. He was brought up serving the Lord. So was Jeremiah had a whole nation against him. His own hometown like Jesus. We're going to kill him. We're going to kill that guy. And yet they done right. Verse 6. Psalm 71. By thee, God, have I been holding up from the womb. From the womb. From the womb. What are you going to do with that verse? You're going to say life is not in the womb. You're going to call God a liar. By the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Thou art he God. That took me out of the mother's bowels. That's Jeremiah 1.5 for Jeremiah. That bowels is not a function. From your butt. A bowel movement. She did not go potty to have the son. Bowels in the Bible is, is the inside. There, Where is a woman's wound? It's inside. Perfect definition. Sometimes doctors are wrong. When they describe bowels as a movement of your body. They'll get around to it, right? They'll, they'll get up to the Bible. They're 20 million years behind. My praise shall be continually of thee. I'm going to praise God all the time. Praise God, wonderful God. Jesus, 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 greatest name I know. And this is one verse seven. And every time I read this verse, I, I, I think of Dr. Rook. I am as a wonder unto many. And boy, was he. I think that he said that's one of the first verses or that was his life verse that he had. There's something about that verse. I'm a wonder to many. So am I. I, I, I go in the street ministry. I, I preach on the street. They're like, what are you? What are you doing? It's not what Jesus would do. It's not what the Bible's doing. You pull people away. You're scaring people. That's not how it's done. What are you doing? What's that piece of paper you're giving me? What's that booklet you're giving me? What are you doing? Why are you living so? Why are you so happy? Why are you trying to do right? Why are you a goody goody? I'm a wonder on many. But thou art my strong refuge. Who's my strength? Who's the one that protects me? Who's the one that... God. I went through today. There's two bad news about the job and all that. And just... Finally, the Lord just said, Okay, you don't get pity party. Am I not taking care of you? Yes, Lord, you're taking care of me. I know what you're going through. I know your problems. I, hey, listen, I know what your prayers are. I'm taking care of you. I'll answer your prayers. But you love me. I love you. Let my mouth be filled with thy praise. Go team, go team. No. We have the greatest church ever. Arch, no. Well, if you buy this product from me, we'll get you two for one and free shit. No. 
Well, you know, this maker, this car, this is a great... No. No. Let the be phrase of God forever be the lips of God and Jesus Christ. Look who I am. No, not, not, it's not how great I am. It's how great thou art. Some people got that hymn wrong. And with thy honor all the day. Thy honor. We are to honor God. And when we honor God by being holy and by trying to please God, and when we don't please God, we don't bless God, we're not honoring Him. We're honoring the devil. And that makes God unhappy. Cast me not off in the time of old age. You say, can I pray for my old age? Can I pray for me? There it is there, the Holy Spirit. He's been following him from the, from the womb. He's been following him from young age. I don't know how old this guy is, but he's saying, Lord, I'm going to get old one day. You help me? That's in the King James Bible, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, say, Lord, not cast me off. And we're going to look at it again in a moment. In old age, forsake not when my strength fails. Lord, when I can't, and that's not lifting weights. That's my eyesight's going. My hearing's going. I can't walk that well. I, I can't do things as I want. Listen, if I knew today how my ministry would be Put off because of my aches and pains and age. Man, when I was young, I, I would have gone a lot more, a lot further for the Lord than what I'm doing today because I can't do what I did yesterday. My body says, that's it. You're done. I, I can push, you know. I, I think I can. I think I can. My body's like, no, you can't. No, you can't. Lord, I want to do it. I'm getting frail. Memory. <laughs> Pastor told me the other day he, he, he's giving me a thing for, for this study. I said, like, Yeah, that sounds good. He goes, You'll have to memorize two verses. I'm like, I said, You know how hard it is to memorize names? I don't even know all the names of people. I pr I'm praying to the Lord. I'm like, Lord, you know that person that sits in that pew. I can't remember. And later on, two hours later, Oh, yeah, that name. I'm getting old. Frail. Lord, when I get old frail and I can't do what I used to be able to do, Lord, we take care of me. There's that prayer, verse 9. For my enemies speak against me. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you ain't got no enemies out there, you're not living for Jesus Christ. If everybody loves you, speaks well of you, you need to get down on your knees and repent of your sins and get right by God. I guarantee Saturday afternoon, well, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, I am the talk of people's tongues about that guy who preaches Jesus. I have churches go against me. I've had my own family go against me. I've had Christians, if I ever said that, go against me. Besides the world going against me. You're not going to make friends being a Christian, really? You think you are? How many people were at the cross of Jesus? The 12 disciples that followed Jesus from the moment that he called them, from the years he was preaching the street, they saw the ministry, they saw the resurrection, they saw the blind see, they saw the, the, the deaf hear, they saw the, 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 the body parts get thick, they saw the healing, they saw that all Jesus did, they saw the storms get clear, they saw the feeding of the 5,000, they seen the feeding of the 4,000, and where were they when Jesus died on the cross? And you think, you have the nerve to think that you're Mr. Wonderful Christian, and all the world's going to love you and happy to you. You're a fool. You tell, you tell yourself, I said that. And they that lay wait for my soul, they want to get you. They want to attack you. Counsel together. I've had that happen. You don't know how many times 
the Daytona Beach has gotten together with city managers and the police department and everything they need to do to try to shut me up. You don't know how many times in my life police departments have been called because of our ministry. We had one time we were at a ministry and the U.S. Marshals came and took us off where we were. The U.S. Marshals. Somebody had to get together and say, we got to get rid of that guy. Saying God has forsaken him. We had a guy say that Saturday. Oh, where's your group of people? I guess God's not with you. They're lying. Because my Bible says, my God said, these things have been written to you that you may know you have eternal life. I will never leave thee or forsake thee. They're lying. Now, God may be, I don't know how I can say it, but he's still with you. He may be just standing back and just letting things happen. But he hasn't left you. Listen, when you first learn how to ride a bike, and, you know, they, they took the training wheels off, and they're holding on to you, and you're pedaling the bike, and you're going, you're going, and Dad, let's go, or Mom, let's go, and you're going. Now, they're behind, but they haven't left you. And you're off riding your bike. And you sometimes you don't even realize, look, where did it go? Where did it go? I'm doing it myself. Thank you. Persecute and take the him. For there is none to deliver. Let's get him now. God's not watching. God's against him. God hates him. Let's, isn't that what they said about Jesus on the cross? Come on. If you really be God, come down off that cross and believe. Oh, he calls for Elias. Let's see if Elias will really come. You know, when you miss the Old Testament, you miss Jesus Christ. You got to read it all. Genesis to Revelation. And go back to Genesis and to Revelation. Go back to and to God calls you home. Oh, God, be not far from me. That's a great prayer. He just said, they, oh, Lord, look, they, they, look, they forsaken him. God, don't be far from me. And God will not be far from you. If you walk with God, I know personally when you have come to the point where you are going to backslide, God stops. When I backslid, God stopped right there. God, like, I'll be back. I'll be right here when you get done fooling around. Go ahead, get more luggage, get more baggage. I'll be right here. And I went off. I, I backslid. Hey, I was witnessing. All, I went off backslid, and I come back to the Lord. And guess where I met the Lord? Right where He stopped. Did God leave me? No. Who left God? I did. I forever got dwell in me the Holy Spirit. He ain't leaving me. But he's talking about in problems, troubles, and situations. Don't forsake me. And they that lay wait for my soul. Oh, wait, no. Verse 11. Persecute and take him. There is none to deliver him. Oh, God, be not far from me. Oh, my God. That's a plea. That's a serious plea. OMG. Oh my God. Make haste. Hurry up for my help. Lord, I'm in trouble. Please hear me, Lord. Please, Lord, be with me in this trouble. Please, Lord, now help. You That's what David said all the Lord, hasty. Come on, Lord. Carry not. Verse 13. Let them, the enemy, be confounded and consumed. That are adversaries to my soul. Consumed? Let them be eaten up. With disease, death. But they won't be consumed. When they go off into the pit called hell for all eternity. And off to the lake of fire to eternity. They won't ever be consumed. Now you see the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament? They are allowed to say, Lord, sick them. Get them. Kill them. Get him. David said, get him, kill him. What did Jesus say for us? Pray for your enemies. Love them that hate you. Because we're to be a testimony. We're to show them the love of God. We are never ever to say, go get him, Lord. Now, there's been a few people like, Lord, you know, they need to learn Galatians 6, 7. 
Now, Paul has turned a couple people over to the devil. One man was sleeping with his father's wife in the Corinthian church. Paul said, I'll turn him over. De church him. And that man got right. That man repented and got back in the church. There was another man that I, I, I think he says, I had to turn over to, he learned not to bless me. Now, Paul ain't saying, listen, burn him in hell. Kill him. Paul's like, Lord, let the devil beat them up like, he, like they did with Job. That they may repent and get right. Because Job repented and got right. Want them to get right. Sometimes if, if the devil gets after you. And that God allows the devil to go after you. As his, uh, as his chastisement. As his battle act. Maybe you'll get right. But you don't ever want to see somebody go off into hell. There's two things I wish never for people. I don't have anybody I hate. I don't like. I don't want to ever have them go to hell, and I don't ever want to have to be a widower. Two things I've learned personally in life. I wish that on nobody. But there are people who try to give me widower's advice and never been a widower. I'm like, Lord, they, they don't even know. Maybe if they know, and then I can repent afterwards. Because I don't want anybody to feel that. If I ever get married again, my prayer that that person will never be a widower. Verse 14, but I will hope continually, always, without stop, and will yet praise thee more and more. Let me ask you, how many years have you been a Christian? Is God more and more in your life from day one? Do you know more about God in the Bible from the first day you started? Do you know the doctrines? Have you grown in the word of God? Have you been to God where you and God are now? Listen, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and God will be like, okay, we're going to have a little talk now. And I'll pray to the Lord. And the Lord will be sometimes, hey, listen, you got a problem with this thing. That's growth in the Lord. Okay, Lord, I got a problem. I used to be, well, not me. Well, not, okay, Lord, I got a problem. I'll, I'll listen to you. I'll... How's your praise? How's your singing? I ain't talking about in church. I'm talking about when you're alone. Who does your heart sing out to? Who do you give the credit to? When somebody mentions the Lord, hey, right now we're getting closer and closer to the Lord coming. Are you excited in your heart? Or, oh, wait, I got something else I want to do. Man, if you're excited, how, yeah, this may be the moment. Yay! All right, you're growing. Oh, no, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I got something. You're not growing. I've had to keep it a couple of times in my bedroom in the hospital. I thought that was it. I was done. I'm like, here I go. I'm ready. I'm sorry I'm going to miss my family, but this is it. Let's go. I'm ready. I'm ready to go see the Lord. I get up some more, honestly, I get up some more, and I'm like, oh, but God has me. I, I sit on the bed and say, Lord God, whatever you have me to do today for you, whatever I can, I, I don't have anything planned today, Lord. I'm not going anywhere I don't, but whatever you want me to do to please you, Lord God, I'll do it. That's growth. I've gotten up from the point of, oh, it's Monday, uh, no, I, Lord, what can I do for you today? My mouth shall show forth thy righteousness. Do you speak about the Lord? Do you witness of the Lord? Look, and thy salvation all the day. You know what he's speaking about salvation? You know what we're supposed to be speaking about salvation? Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Well, I got a wonderful great church. You know how great church my you know, you, you need to come to my church. You need to hear my, my preacher and all. See, you see, I get a do that too. I get little buttons. If, you know, if I bring people out to church, oh man, I'm telling you, you know, oh, I just no, let me tell you about Jesus. You know what Jesus did to me? You know, I'm going to, you need help. I'm going to give you this $5 in the name of Jesus Christ. And he's giving you $5 to help you. Sir. It's nothing but but the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ saved my soul, man, since April 21st, 19. It's nothing but, but Jesus Christ. Are you witnessing? Because verse 15 tells you to witness God's salvation. What's God's salvation? Jesus Christ. For I know not the numbers thereof. I can't I count 
count your blessings one by one. There is too many. There are blessings I don't even know what God has done for me. I will go in strength of the Lord God. You ever say, Lord, when I, when I get old and lose strength, go in the strength of God. And when you go in the strength of God and you think you can't do it, and oh, I haven't memorized verses, Lord, I'm trying. And you go in the strength of the Lord and you're witnessing to somebody. And then you, I, I walk out of that conversation like, wow, I didn't know I knew that Bible verse. Well, go ahead and try to quote that Bible verse right now. I can't. That's because the Lord, you're studying and you're reading the Bible, you're praying to God, and God's using you by the Spirit, the whole, by the Holy Spirit, for you to witness and deal with other people. That's the strength of God. And when you come out of that strength, you can't say, "Oh, it was me memorizing scriptures." No, it was the Holy Spirit working. That's the strength of God. I will make mention of Thy righteousness. Who's the, Thy righteousness for you and me? It's Jesus Christ, the righteous. Our righteousness of God is Jesus Christ, even thine only. O oh God, thou hast taught me from my youth. Oh, so you see, it's not preachers and teachers and Sunday school teachers. Now, they are an, uh, uh, a pillar that the Holy Spirit uses. And you're to use the Holy Spirit that dwells in you to learn from them what the Holy Spirit says. It's not all the men and women, but God does use them, and God uses you if you listen. And here too have I declared thy wondrous works, how great thou art. You told testimonies to people what God has done for you. Have you told people what, hey, you know, that, that you won't believe what God did in my life. Now also when I am old and gray-headed, there he goes again. Can I pray when I'm old? There it is. Yes. There's an old age retirement in the Bible. Psalm 71. Verse 9. Verse 18. Lord, I don't know when I'm going to die. I have no idea you do. But if I'm going to live to an old, get gray hairs and out of strength. Lord, will you help me? Because the government won't. People won't. Lord, will you help me? Oh God, forsake me not when he's old. Until I have showed thy strength. Not my strength. Verse 9. Thy strength. Unto this generation. Now see, there's someone who's grown old. Why? For the generation he's living in. We Christians are here today. In this period called coronavirus, that when the world is in fear and fear of death and have no idea what they're doing, it is up to us Christians who are living today to go out and tell them about a hope and tell them about God has not given the spirit of fear, but the power. And he, God has given them the Lord Jesus Christ to believe on him that if you're going to die and you die in Christ, you have a blessed hope. And if you live for Christ and you believe on Christ, oh, what God has promised you. And thy power to everyone that is to come. There is power, power, wanting, working power in the blood. The blood of the Lamb. That's what we're to proclaim. Thy righteousness, God's righteousness, also. O oh God is very high. Who has done great things? O oh God. Who is like unto thee? No one. They try to make monkey men. They try to make the big bang. There is no big bang. But they try to make that God. That's nothing. That leaves no evidence. God leaves his handiwork. God leaves his fingerprints. On his creation. I am wonderfully and marvelously made, the Bible says. I don't have to plug myself in the middle of the night. Like we got to do phones and batteries and other stuff we got to plug in. I don't have to plug me in. My heart's been going since 1968. 
You can't even find a car go that long without to get parts. You know, there, there's a parts store for cars, but there's no parts store for humans. Thou, God, which has showed me great and sore troubles. Uh oh. I just shut down the prosperity gospel, didn't I? You see, God will give you no trouble. Everything be hunky dory. Everything be great. He, he says, God, thou, God, and show me great and sore troubles. <laughs> God, you gave me problems. That's not the modern God today. Why does God give us problems? To build us up, to strengthen us. A weightlifter starts off with the, with the very lowest weight he can do. And then he builds on those weights. And he gets more weights. And he gets more weights. And he gets more weights. And, and he keeps, God says, I'll give you a little trouble. I'll give you a little problem. And I'll give you a little more. I'm at the point right now, and I'm not boasting, I'm not bragging, but there are times right now, it's like, I don't get angry anymore. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I sin. But there's times, you know what? The other day, I got a thing in the mail. Well, you know what? God will take care of me. Devil's like, how do you know? He's taken care of me before. May not work out how I want it to work out, but God will have it work out. That's troubles and problems. All right, God took care of it. Lord, you see this thing. Shall quicken me again, make me alive. And shall bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Resurrection. Resurrection. I'm going to die and God's going to raise me up. That's what Job said. Job said, though I, I, I die and the worms eat my flesh, I will see God. Face to face. There's that hope. Even in the Old Testament soul, there's that hope. I'm going to see God. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Now, it won't be really my greatness, it's God's greatness. But what are people who are going to be witnessing? Wow, what's. And that's the testimony to God. And that's the testimony to say, okay, you're looking at me, but let me have you look at God. Let me look at Jesus. I will also pray thee with the psaltery, music, even thy truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. My God, oh my God. Great. That's an old great, oh my God. How great. Oh God, you're so worthy. I'm going to learn how to play an instrument for you. Unto thee will I sing with a heart. Music. O thou holy one of Israel. You better have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's no other God but the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The one said, I am. That I am. Can you play an instrument? Can you sing? I can't. People say I do, but I can't. Do it for God. There was a a colored woman, I, I forgot her name, but she died a little while ago of drugs. I think it was a suicide. And she grew up in a Baptist church. She claims to be saved, I don't know. And she said one day, she said, she would she was singing the choir, she was singing for Jesus. I read the testimony. And she said, one day I'm just going to go do it for the world. I'm going to do it for money. And her life was miserable. Don't give it to the world. Jesus said that one man got talents, this man got talents, another man got a talent, this man gained more talents, the second man gained not as much talents, but he gained talents, and that other man, he hid his talents. God's given me a big mouth. I wonder what I could do with that big mouth if I want to be in the world. Maybe I can announce people going around left-hand turns, left-hand or NASCAR. Maybe I can. I could have done auctioneer. I don't know. I got a big mouth. You testify to my mom, she'll tell you that kid's got a big mouth. That kid's got lungs. Oh, man, he never shut up. But I give it to the Lord. Now, people in church has told me I can sing. I don't hear me sing. They said it. And I put the fleece out there and the fleece came back. Okay. I'm in the church choir when I feel able. I mean, if I'm not feeling ill with my leg. 
I'm in the church choir because they say I can do it. I'm giving what I sing to the Lord. There are people who don't. I know one man who, who's been in music in his past churches. And we need his help, but he, uh, I'm not going to do it. Shame. My lips, my lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee. Are you singing to the Lord happily or, oh, uh, 289. I hate that song. We sing it every other week or every week. I wish they'd come up with another song. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, good. We're only singing two stanzas. Blah, blah, blah. That's not joyfully. That's not rejoicing. If you don't like that hymn, go home, get yourself some, some computer MP3, get yourself a CD in your car, go into work, sing the hymns on the tape or the CD that you like. Make seven days, five days. Hey, I sing to the CD in the car. No one's in the car with me. I'm going to work. And when they do sing that hymn I don't like in church, I got five days. I'm rejoicing the Lord. I guess I can do one song. And you know, pray to the Lord while they're playing it. Just pray to the Lord. And my soul which thou has redeemed, paid for. Paid for. And they didn't go to heaven when they died. They went to Abraham's bosom waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to die. My tongue. And James bad mouths the tongue. But my tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day long. That takes work. Because your tongue would love to speak about other things. James says that the tongue is, is on the fires of hell. It is an unruly evil. Your tongue would love to, to destroy and to taper your tongue to speak about Jesus. And only by Jesus. That takes hard work. You know, when you're telling a story to your pastor or the people at church or another Christian, or you, your tongue wants to, let me make this story a little better. Let me add a little more. No, oh, no. Because a lie is a lie. I've done that. I made a story a little better. That's a lie. That don't redeem God. That don't bring out righteousness. For they are confounded. For they are brought into shame. That seek my hurt. Let me make one last statement here. If you are a Christian. Or profess to be a Christian. Shame on you if you badmouth or try to harm another Christian. Wrongfully. Even if rightfully, you shouldn't even be saying anything. If you try to destroy, you try to divide, you try to conquer over another Christian, and you try any way and anyhow to hurt that Christian, you're an enemy. And Paul, who was an enemy of God before he got saved, when he persecuted Christians, Jesus said, why persecute thou me? And if you're going out hurting Christians, I would not want to be a Christian and have Jesus come up to you. Why did you hurt me? Well, I didn't hurt you, Lord. You hurt him. You, you hurt my bride there. You hurt my child there. You hurt my child there. Why did you hurt me? Saved or lost, if you hurt other Christians, you're going to stand before Jesus. Saved or lost, why did you hurt me? Why did you hurt me? I would not want to be in those shoes, ever. You need to repent. You need to get right. You need to help uplift others to grow in the Lord, rather destroy and conquer. Christians are supposed to be loving each other, not devouring each other. That's what the enemy does. That's what the enemy does through the book of Psalms. Trying to devour, trying to destroy. We ought to be helping each other. We ought to be guiding each other to the best of our ability. And the best thing you got, if you got nothing to say that's good, then shut up. Yep, shut up. Don't say it. Plain and simple. 
I've had many people say many words about me and many words to me, and they need to shut up. If they don't know anything, they have no idea, shut up. Now, if you need to teach me something, you need to show me something that I'm doing wrong, and it, it, it conforms with the Bible and, and what God wants us, then I'll listen. Plain and simple. We're not to hurt each other. Purposely. See, sometimes we hurt each other, we don't even realize, but purposely. Well, I thank you very much. Lord willing, tomorrow night, 7 p.m., we'll be getting to Psalm 72. Hope you enjoy this. Like it. Tell your friends about it. Let's get the word of God out. Let's get God praised. To God's glory. Have a good day.